for good morning good morning everyone the number one NCLEX instructor on the planet right here <laughs> i'm taking that title very serious because it is 4 a.m here in kenya it's 4 a.m here in kenya but we have a work to do one thing that i have noticed since traveling really the world is that people who are interested in passing NCLEX don't make excuses. I've had nursing students who have come to these classes in the morning and they work night shift and they came right from work. I have people who have flown from the United States to Africa to be here and really focus on getting their nursing license. So we can't have excuses during this process, especially if you know you have been struggling with this for a long time and it is preventing you from living the life you wanna live, right? You just can't have excuses. And the more that I see people who have less Literally, people who have less than what a, a lot of Americans take for granted and are still pursuing this journey, the more I cannot let you guys get in a comfort zone thinking that mm, I can't do this uh, or this test is bigger than me. Now, there are people that are literally walking to and from work through dirt roads <laughs> that are going to pass this NCLEX. So if you're sitting in the comfort of your home and you're watching me online and you know this is something that you passively want to do or are you something you think about every now and then, understand it's people who are serious about this, okay? They're really going to do it. They're really going to change your life, um, their life and their family's life. So let us all have that mind as we are sacrificing on this journey. If you don't want to change your life, don't do anything at all. Just keep going about your day. You don't have to work hard. It, you just take the easy way out. But if you are going to change your life and your family's life and your church's life and everybody around you, then you got to work hard. OK, you got to work hard. Um, so I know I have nurses from the U.S. here. Thank you so much for being here. Nurses from Nepali. Um, nurses from where else? Where else I have nurses from? Ah, <laughs> this is an international community. And so I love the representation that we have here. I want to acknowledge your presence. Let me know where you're from. And if you passed NCLEX, if you passed NCLEX, that's also, that's also. All right. So we are going to Florida, Texas, Puerto Rico. Ah, yes. All here on um, this great morning, Philippines. It's nice to have you. We're going to talk about radiation therapy. And radiation therapy is a big part of NCLEX, okay? This topic comes from Quick Facts, of course. I was just reading it. It is on page number. That's how we get into it. If you have, if you have an NCLEX test date, but you don't have Quick Facts for NCLEX, I highly suggest that you get this book. All right. It is very important for you to get the basic fundamentals down. My V2 lectures, the videos are what is going to put everything together in terms of helping you understand your priorities. But this book is a great reading resource for those that want a lot of structured information quickly. So radiation therapy is what I want to discuss on today. Now, um, uh, okay, let me get this one. This one just caught my eye. I don't know why. Simple Living. Hello, Miss Regina and the rest of the Remar nurse RN and PN. I'm a silent follower watching from Saudi Arabia, but originally a Filipina. When we were in Qatar, um, I saw a lot of Filipinas there. So um, always, always glad to meet you. Always glad to be out. And you, you, you represent your country well. I am sure. I am sure. Okay. So radiation therapy, the reason why I put this in quick facts and the reason why I talk about it in the V2 lectures is because 
if you go into the hospital, you will more than likely experience radiation. It is something that you get if you are getting a diagnostic procedure or if you are getting treatment. And I think nursing students, when they talk about or when they think about radiation therapy, it is only in regards to cancer. So what I want to do is just shift your mind to the fact that we use radiation when we give patients what? X-rays. That's radiation. Um, and so you can have a low dose a, of radiation or you can have a high dose of radiation. So when you are approached with the subject, make sure to ask, well, what radiation are we talking about? What type of radiation are we talking about? Are we talking about diagnostic radiation? Are we talking about treatment radiation? Yes, 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 yes. So nurses, we deal with radiation all the time, all the time. But um, for page 76, we are talking about treatment radiation. And so those are the ones that I wanna go over. Hey, shout out to all of the international nurses again. I am here in Kenya still. I have one more class tomorrow in Eldoret, but you have to understand that international nurses, listen, listen to me right now. International nurses, it's possible. It is possible for you to come to the U.S. It's possible for you to just really change the dynamics of your, your future. Don't let your current situation make a future decision. Don't let your current situation make a future decision. All right. And so that means that any of us, any of us right here today can study, can study these things. All right. And then also, also make sure that they have what they need to pass the NCLEX. Now let's get into it, radiation therapy again. So when we talk about radiation therapy, we are talking about a cancer treatment that uses an intensive amount of radiation to kill cancer cells, all right? And it also reduces tumor, uh, tumors that are present. Radiation therapy, the way it works is that it destroys the cancer DNA. So it works to um, alter the cancer at a cellular level, and it uses X-rays, gamma rays, electron beams, or protons. Um, we are we are talking about the direct, the direct and precise location of radiation here. So it's a very serious treatment, and you can do radiation in regards to chemotherapy or surgery, but the benefit of radiation therapy as opposed to mm, chemotherapy is that when you give a patient chemotherapy, it is going to focus on which cells. When we give a patient chemotherapy, does it pick and choose which cells that it works on? No, chemotherapy is going to attack healthy and cancerous cells. So radiation therapy is chosen because it can actually just focus on cancer cells. Yes, so if you didn't know that, that is a good point to take hold of today, today, today. All right, let's get back into it. And so with radiation therapy, because it just focuses on the cancer cells, Sometimes it is used in combination with chemotherapy or surgery, chemotherapy or surgery. Radiation therapy destroys cancer cells, reduces tumors, and alleviates cancer symptoms. It may be the only treatment or it may be used also to decrease tumor sizes um, or other cancer treatments that eliminate any cancers after surgery. All right, and also again, radiation therapy can be used to treat benign non-cancerous tumors as well as malignant tumors. All right, we're talking about radiation therapies. In this Quick Facts book, in this Quick Facts book, I mentioned the two types of radiation therapy routes that you need to know, and that is the internal and external. The great thing about Quick Facts is that because it is just question and answer, 
you get the information faster. You get the information faster. So let's talk about this external radiation therapy. So when you have an external radiation therapy, which is the most common, this is where it's also abbreviated external beam radiation therapy. And this is where the machine directs a high energy radiation beam at the tumor. And the energy is mostly x-rays. That's the most common, but it could be electrons or, or protons. Internal radiation therapy, what we have here is the radiation is delivered inside of the body, inside of the body, and it is close to the cancer cells. So we still want to try to be as close to the cells as possible, and it is actually very beneficial for smaller tumors. So if a patient has a tumor in their head, in their neck, in their breast, in their cervix, in their uterus, or in their prostate, then we would go for the internal radiation. It's called a break of therapy because you put a solid radiation source, they call them seeds, inside or near the tumor, and then that, that radiation permeates from the seed to the tumor. The, um, the systemic therapy could be also used. Radiation therapy can also be systemic. It is less common, but this is where you put a liquid radioactive material in the patient's bloodstream to locate and kill cancer cells. Now, some of the radiation therapy can actually be taken orally, can be ingested or given at intravenous route. This is page 76 in the quick facts for next gen. There are unfortunately many side effects, many side effects of radiation therapy. Um, some of them do look, some of them do look very similar to the chemotherapy route. You may be familiar with them. What do we have here? We have um, fatigue, diarrhea, dry, itchy scalp, dry mouth, a reduced appetite. Now, this, this radiation therapy, check this out. It can affect the bladder in a major way. So a patient will start to report issues with urinary tract infections, um, pain, urinary discomfort, burning sensations. And, and so I wanted to make this point here that radiation therapy can affect your bladder. Abdominal bloating or cramps, nausea, headaches, hair loss, painful swallowing, increased salivation, mm -hmm, vomiting, skin irritation, mouth sores. This is very similar to chemotherapy. It inflames the mouth. It inflames the skin. Loss of taste burning sensation in the throat or chest, and again, urinary frequency and bowel urgency for these patients. Radiation therapy is contradicted, okay, completely or relatively contradicted in pregnancy. In patients who have connective disease, tissue diseases such as vasculitis, scleroderma, systemic lupus erythematosus, and significant pre-existing lung disease if it is going to reduce their capacity. Pacemakers that are in proximity to the radiation may be a contraindication for the patient to get this. Okay, so this may be uh, a lot, but I know that it will be beneficial, so just please allow me to read this as you are learning about radiation therapy. So before beginning external beam radiation treatment or therapy, the patient should actually see a radiologist or radiation oncologist. They can decide which treatment is appropriate. Internal radiation therapy is usually performed in a specialized outpatient or hospital setting. The radiation oncologist may insert the radiation implant through a small flexible tube called a catheter. Anesthesia will be administered for the treatment 
so that the patient does not ensure, um, incur any pain or discomfort during internal radiation therapy. Now, when you're undergoing systemic internal radiation therapy, radioactive fluid will be inserted through the IV catheter. When a patient has the external beam radiation treatment, the patient will be on the table in the same position during the simulation, okay? The radiation machine moves around the client, but it does not touch them. The machine is run by a medical professional that is called a radiation therapy. That person works in a separate room because we have to understand that when a patient is um, irradiated, they are very dangerous to be around, okay? In, in terms of that radiation affecting those around them. So the person that is irradiating the patient from the separate room is communicating with them through an intercom. And the machine is delivering precise doses, concentrate, concentrated doses of radiation as it moves around. For NCLEX, remember the patient does not feel anything when they are getting external radiation. They don't feel anything during the procedure. Now they can have side effects. So there are many different areas of nursing that you can find yourself in. So if you're working, just listen here, if you're working in a, um, an ICU as a nurse and you hate it, you hate going to work, you get anxiety about going to work, let me give you some professional advice. Leave, okay? Because you may find yourself more of an oncology nurse. You may find yourself more of an operation room nurse. You may find yourself more of a NICU nurse. So in nursing, because there are so many opportunities, you don't ever have to feel stuck. I see on TikTok, a lot of nurses that are crying in their car before they go to work, or they're talking about how much they hate bedside nursing. Well, you don't have to stay there. There are so many disciplines that you can do. And that's why I say, get your nursing license, pass this NCLEX, because you can literally travel the world doing it. So internal, external, internal, external radiation. Your assessment is when radiation therapy is directed towards the skin or the oral pharyngeal mucosa, you have to assess those areas, okay? Also make the connection that if my patient, if their mouth is irritated or they lose their appetite, their nutritional status is gonna go down. In the, um, in the QuickFlex book, we talk about the safety protocols. Also here on the slide, the safety measures are putting the patient in a private room, putting a note about radiation safety precautions posted, all right, in the room, having staff members wear dosimeter badgers, also making sure that no pregnant staff members or children visitors are allowed, um, also pregnant visitors. We are limiting the amount of time of visits to about 30 minutes, should be no longer than that. And the visitor should maintain a six foot distance from the source of radiation. Very important to protect those who want to be around the patient. The patient should not be totally isolated, but there has to be limitations. Also, we know fatigue is going to be a side effect, mouth sores, nausea as well. And so just in our normal nursing care, we are mindful, we are mindful, mindful, mindful of these particular precautions as we talk about radiation therapy, radiation therapy. Mouth sores, oh, let me go back to this. I just wanna um, read fatigue, assess contributing factors, encourage client to rest, refer clients to physical therapy to help them to feel better and increase their stamina. Mouth sores, we need to avoid irritants. If our patient has mouth sores, tell them alcohol, tobacco, Spicy foods, acidic foods, and hot beverages are going to irritate their mouth. They should eat soft foods, 
liquid diet if possible, or if necessary, avoiding dry foods. Frequent mouthwash or saline water, they have specific um, refreshing mouthwash. So this isn't necessarily the, the alcohol-based mouthwash that most of us are using. Nausea, eating small frequent meals throughout the day, nutritious high protein snacks, um, avoiding eating fatty or greasy food as well. We recommend um, these to our patient. Pain, patient is gonna be in some pain. So we wanna keep track of their pain. If we're talking to adults, we use the scale zero to 10, taking note of what medications the patient is taking. Also, if they're taking an analgesic, anybody on pain medication for NCLEX, we need to monitor constipation and monitor their hydration. And then also as well, if there's any drug interactions that will be noted, we have to monitor them for the patient. Because the patient's skin may be irradiated, it could become irritated. So we have to uh, make sure that that skin is clean and dry. There are also hydrogel pads that can be given, and this can improve the comfort of their patient. All right, all right. So these are things that you could just be mindful of. Nutrition, we're weighing the patient once a week. These are not the patients that we're weighing daily, but once a week. If they're not able to maintain their nutrition, then we may have to put in a PEG tube. The PEG tube is percutaneous endoscopic gastronomy tube. And I, like I said, dehydration can be a factor for these patients. So weakness, dizziness, um, decreased urine production are signs of dehydration. This is a simple principle that I want you guys to go into on, um, on, a, on your own time. All right. Part of preparing for NCLEX is what you do when you're by yourself. So if you want to get to a location faster, you should have a roadmap or a GPS. Most of us are using a GPS to get to where we want to go. Quick Facts is a part of my GPS system as long, along with the V2. I'm really encouraged because when I was here in Kenya, one of my classes, there were three nurses from Kenya who used the V2, who I had never met before, I had never spoken to um, personally. And so they were just like you watching these videos. They took advantage of the course. One of them had actually, they were, were a repeat test taker. Um, they used they used a different study system. I can't remember, I don't know which one it was, but they decided to take a chance and get into the V2. And they all have their license here in Kenya, here in Kenya. And so if you're watching this and you're not sure if you want to do an NCLEX prep program, you're not sure about Remar, I'm telling you now, take the chance, get in the GPS system that is NCLEX V2, all right? And you can get into the program for free, try it out and see if you like it, all right? So if you go to remarnurse.com, you can get into the program for free. I just want to let you know what you have available to you. I just want to let you know what you have available to you because sometimes people don't go further because they don't know how to get there. Um, I love this comment I um, from, I think it's Ryan. I passed my NCLEX on March 21st with 85 questions. Thank you, Regina and Mark for the, for what? Tell me what it is for. I'm assuming it's for V2. That's what I'm going to say. All right. Now let's get into um, just some other things that I have as well. If you're in nursing school, then you can start off with the quick facts for NCLEX. Most of us, though, are actually actively preparing for this exam. And so the quick facts, oh, I said quick facts for nursing school. So the quick facts for NCLEX is better um, for you. If you're wondering where I will be next, I am coming back to the great USA. I'm coming back to the great USA. And so I will be in Orlando, Florida. So I encourage you, if you are in the Florida area, all right, if you're in Orlando, if you are in Palm Springs, if you are in, um, if you're in Miami, like wherever, I literally get there. 
get there, make the sacrifice and get there. Because sometimes it only takes one experience to set you right, to make you really solidify where you want to be. Okay. And so I, like I said, I've had nurses yesterday who came from Uganda. They came from Uganda to Kisimu to meet me in the class. So when I come back to the U.S., the excuses of like, oh, I'm going to wait till you come to my city. Oh, it's too far. Like, can't do it. Can't do it. Because when you see something as valuable as a nursing license that will take your income from 20000 a year to 70000 a year, you get there. You, you make the sacrifices. You do what you have to do. And... I can only encourage you so much. I can only pump you up so much. There's a work that you have to do. And coming from America, you can be anything in America. This, this American dream is real. It is real. Is it easy? No, but it's real. But the thing about having an American dream is that nobody is going to give it to you. It's your dream. So you have to work for it. Um, and then when you do, it's possible. All right, it's possible. So I'll be in Orlando. I'm going to do a master class there. It will be transformational to somebody in the room. Um, we always have a great time. So make sure April 7th, it's a Sunday. You don't miss it. You can sign up for it as well. Remarnurse.com forward slash Orlando, Orlando. Here's our first question. We have four questions um, tonight. The, the nurse, I'm sorry, the client, it is the client, the client with stage two prostate cancer currently on radiation therapy for 30 days reports filling chili, nausea, and flank pain. What action should be the nurse's first action? What action should be the for nurse's first action? Number one, insert IVX access for antibiotics. Two, request for an abdominal ultrasound. Three, obtain urine sample for your analysis. Four, monitor intake and output of the client. Ooh, if you got the content tonight, then you know the right answer to this question. Mm hmm. And this is what I am empowering you with is just the steps to be successful on this exam. And the steps to be successful is to study the subject matter first with me and then do practice questions. Okay. And so as we studied the subject matter first, we know number three, I see most of you have it right. We know that radiation therapy can affect the bladder irritate the bladder, the urethra that can lead to cystitis and urinary tract infections. And that may be something that you did not know until you showed up for class today. So I'm happy that you're here because you got it right. Most of us got it right. So let me go on to number two. The nurse evaluates a post mastectomy client receiving external radiation therapy for right breast cancer and notices skin tightness, redness, and swelling in the client's right arm. The following symptoms indicate what side effect of radiation therapy. What side effect? Number one, arthritis. Two, eczema. Three, loss of appetite. Four, lymphedema. Okay, so again, with NCLEX, remember, they're gonna tell you everything you need to know to answer the question correctly. So check the patient that we're talking about and the situation, and then pick the right answer. So the right answer in this specific question number two today is lymphedema. Radiation, radiotherapy may hinder blood flow from breast tissue, all right? Especially if you're doing localized, right? We know that the thing about radiation that makes it popular is that you can send it to a specific place and it does not have to affect the entire body. So if our patient is having breast cancer, 
um, then radiation therapy may hinder the blood flow in the breast tissue, which would result in swelling, edema, lymphedema. Okay, it also may change the appearance of the, the breast tissue as well. Great job, great job, everyone, great job. Question number three, here we go. We are in the process of preparing. We are testing our knowledge. It says the nurse reviews the doctor's orders for a client with nasal pharyngeal cancer who recently completed radiation therapy. Which diagnostic procedure mm -hmm, is needed to assess? Oh, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got to check this. I got to read this. SMP. I love this testimony. Look, hello, Regina. I got the RN pass last Saturday. So you might have missed me on Monday. My first attempt. I'm Sonia from Miami. Yes, I use Quick Facts and the V2. That's that's the secret combo. Quick Facts. People ask me, can you just pass with Quick Facts? Mm, not really. No, not really. The V2, the lectures, is what puts together the Quick Facts information that helps you Oh, feel so good. Okay, so anyways, love, blessings to all of the Remar family. Wow, wow, I love that. Got the RN pass the first time. And so you know what happens when you pass on the first time? You save money, number one, which most of you are, are, are nursing students, right? You don't have a lot of money. But when you take it, then that means you've only invested your study material and you've invested the 200 well, whatever, $260, $200 to take the test. And that's it. And that means that you have just a small investment amount that will continue to pay you. Listen, you have your license. That investment will go from about what, four, maybe $300 if you, if you purchase V2 to, and that includes your test because V2 is under $100, to $30,000. 40,000 over every year, every year. So that small investment gives you a million dollar return over your lifetime. Most of you are millionaires. If you make $70,000 a year and you work for 10 years, that's $700,000. So what are you willing to invest in this process to get that return? To get that return. Um, so I love this. You have your investment. You, you made the seed. You planted the seed. And now it is going to grow throughout your life. Congratulations. Somebody should be getting excited because you're next. You're next. You're next. Congratulations. Wow. Okay. So um, I'm, I'm in a room full of millionaires. Oh, my goodness. All right. Let me, let me straighten up. The nurse reviews the doctor's orders for a client with nasal pharyngeal cancer who recently completed radiation therapy. Which diagnostic procedure is needed to assess osteoporosis? Mm, mm, mm. Osteoporosis. Is it number one, the DEXA scan? Two, arthroscopy? Three, electromography? Four, PET scan, PET scan. Oh, come on in here and answer this question right. I know you know it. I know you know it. And so as we're talking about radiation therapy, we have to be able to also talk correctly about the side effects. And so the side effect here, osteoporosis, is connected to the diagnostic DEXA scan. DEXA scan. And again, if you did not know that, you need to get into my program before you test for NCLEX. I don't want you wasting money failing this exam. All right. All right. I hear you, Cheryl. Cheryl says, I'm next Professor Regina. I'm next Professor Regina. Mm hmm. Okay. Um, question number four is, which of the following, which of the following clients must be referred mm -hmm, to the doctor for further evaluation before starting radiation therapy. Hmm. All right, here we go. Uh, number one, a client with colon cancer, a history of type two diabetes and insulin dependent. Two, a client with breast cancer and missed two periods for, um, for two consecutive months. Okay, 
Let me read that again. A client with breast cancer and missed periods for two consecutive months. Three, a client with oral cancer and is currently on a smoking cessation therapy. Or four, a client with rectal cancer with colostomy and in parenteral nutrition. I see the answers rolling, rolling, rolling in. And it seems like you wanna pass this test. It seems like you're showing up at 4 a.m. with me. If you're in Eastern Africa, it's 4 a.m. for us. If you're in the Philippines, it's 9 a.m. for you. If you're in the United States, it's 9 p.m. And what I'm seeing is that you have not let the barrier of time discourage you. This is a great thing. The correct answer is two, because we want to investigate if a female client, which we know the client is female in this instance, because um, it says the client has breast cancer, right? And they missed their period for two consecutive months, which may be a pregnancy concern. Um, and so this is why we need to do some further evaluations. Yes, great job. And so you're able to make this connection. This, this is really high level thinking. This is really high level thinking. And so, oh, it's 1 a.m. for those who are in the UK. I cannot, I cannot neglect that time. It's not easy to study at 1 a.m. And so what I'm saying is that all of these barriers are allowing you to, um, are allowing you to still continue to study with me still continue to study with me. And the, t the barrier of time does not have to be something that you continually have to face. Now, I had to set an alarm to be here this morning because I was sleeping very well. I had to set an alarm to wake me up. But what I wanna tell you is that in order for you to really get all of the information, you don't have to set an alarm because if you get into the V2 program, all of my information is available for you whenever you want to study, whenever you want to study. So your intentions of coming here should be in addition to what you're already doing at home, in addition to what you're already doing at home. I love the classes that we do Monday and Wednesdays, but they're not enough. They're not enough for you to have a full, complete um, review. OK, so I want you to do these classes if you are doing the V2 because they'll help you. All right. I want you to avoid the scammers that are trying to distract you, too. Nurse um, Beanie says, hello, Professor Regina. I passed my exam yesterday with 90 questions. Thank you and Mark for the quick facts and V2 program you've provided. God bless you for everything you've done. God bless you for everything you've done. And listen, look at this. When you take your NCLEX exams, you can get your results back very quickly, very quickly. I learned here in Kenya that it takes up to two months. It takes up to two months to get your results back if you take the Kenyan examination for nurses. But with NCLEX, you can get your results back quickly, very quickly. And so that means you can start working very quickly. You can have your nursing license and be working and have a, a full stable career by Christmas. It's very exciting, very exciting, even before then. So again, as you guys are in the process of making decisions about how you will spend your time, where you will spend your time, I thank you for showing up here with me and the Remar nurses, all right? And I also thank you for prioritizing this special time. OK, ha prioritizing this special time. And so as you are before you take your big examination, examine where you are, examine where you are. All right. I'm going to leave you with this thought again. Don't let your current situation make future decisions. Where you are now does not have to be where you stay. Find a role model. Find somebody that you are, are looking up to so that you can say, if they did it, I can do it. We have many examples right here of people who I've read, they have passed their NCLEX. And now you can say, if they did it, I can do it. All right, I do appreciate you guys following me on the YouTube channel 
and getting those notifications. If you subscribe to my YouTube channel, you will get the notifications of when I go live. And that may be um, helpful. That may be helpful. All right. Um, I love this question. Let's take some questions really quickly. Please, Brenda says, for a starter like me, what do you recommend? Buy the quick facts and V2? Or is it a must to start the free trial? Um, for a starter, I would say if you are wanting to get your nursing license quickly, then you go for the full program. You get everything you need. Um, the reason why I do the free trial, it is because there are people who have been hurt in the past. All right. And there are people who have spent um, $400, 500 dollars on an NCLEX review program, and it was just um, not what they needed. It didn't fit their study habits. They failed the NCLEX. They're hurt because they thought if they did questions, if they sat with this tutor, that they would get the results. And so the free trial is almost like a healing process because it allows you to see the difference. It allows you to see what I'm going to do to provide you not only questions, but the, the lectures that really will make a difference. So if you already know that you want to go with my program, you've been watching me for a, while, for a while, I would say just get into the program. You don't need the free trial if you're serious and you want to get started right away. Just get started right away. It's there for you. But if you want the free trial um, and you need um, a prep starter step, then take the free trial. The thing about it is, when you take the free trial, you will see also all parts of the program, but purchasing it will require you to upgrade inside of the program instead of just buying it offline. So when you create a free trial, be prepared to purchase it inside of your free trial. Okay, inside of your free trial. Any other questions? Um, can you make a class on dialysis? I'm finished with V2. I'm not clear about it. Okay, so dialysis is also, you can also understand dialysis from quick facts. So make sure that you have also, um, when you're doing V2, you also read the dialysis portion. And I'm gonna show it to you here because I, I took a lot of time to do an extensive dialysis in quick facts for you too. So dialysis is here and dialysis is here. If you know these things here, you're good, okay? All right. Um, please get the V2 and quick facts. You will be an RN in less than a month. That's the truth. That's the truth. Um, please stick to Professor Regina's schedule. I passed my boards last week and I'm a proud Remar nurse. Thank you so much. Thank you for that. Um, it's just really that simple. It really is. Um, you can make it as easy or as difficult as you want to. Um, if you fail NCLEX in the past, you really have to get over the barrier of I can't do this, of negative self-talk, and you have to fail quickly. So I'll say it again. If you failed NCLEX in the past, fail quickly, get back up again, get into this program, and get your nursing license. Um, Nurse Paulette, hi, Professor Regina and Remar family. I will always be in debt to you. I will always speak about your program. I started my new life last Tuesday. And I know I'm able to live my best life. This is somebody who has taken and passed the NCLEX and their life is different. And, and the way that it's different is that they're saying they're able to live their best life. You don't say that unless you have freedom. You have freedom. Oh, man. <laughs> I can't even go into this. Oh, it's so good. Who wants to be free? Free to travel, free to move around, free to take vacations, free to purchase at your discretion. That's the freedom you get with your nursing license. Hi, Regina, please, what is ATT? And it is a must that one take it before the NCLEX exam. All right, um, an ATT is an authorization to test. And so you absolutely must have your ATT in order to schedule a test date, okay? So if you're an international nurse or um, you need to, or even if you're a domestic nurse, you have to get approval to test authorization, all right? 
Oh, so hi, Agnes. Um, it's really to hear nurses from Uganda um, come to Kasimu to meet you. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. People traveled. Um, and it honestly, it wasn't just to meet me. That's a small part of it. But it was to hear about the opportunity to change their life. And it was to hear about how they could take the next steps. That's what it was for. Um, and so a lot of you, you see me all the time and it goes in one ear and out the other. It kind of like is like, oh, OK, I'm going to class. But you have to make sure are you taking the next steps to your freedom? Because that's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about just passing NCLEX. That's great. I'm talking about what happens when you do that, when you do that. Um, the V2 is always on sale. Honestly. The price of the V2 is always on sale because I make it, especially the 30 day, the 30 day program. Let me just look at it really quickly, just to put it in perspective. I always put the V2 on sale because I want you to have access. I don't want it to be a huge financial burden to you. I understand where you're coming from. And so the investment that I asked you to make is small, it's small. So right now, for the V2 with one month, okay? And you get your lectures, your questions, and your content is $99. That's it. And most people finish my program in that first 30 days, okay? So one month access, $99. Can you do that? Yes, it's like $3 a day. Is your nursing license worth $3 a day? Yes. OK. Um, and so, it, again, it's just where do you want to put where do you want to put your time? Where do you want to put your time? If you sacrifice now, if you do a little bit now. Go take your test and you pass it. It's a savings. OK. <laughs> All right. So. I'm going to leave you, it is almost 5 a.m. I have another class to teach in just a few hours. And so I'm sacrificing my time to be with you right now in a major way because I need you to know that you are valuable. You're valuable. Do you have anything that helps answer questions? Does it have a daily study guide? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Um, my program comes with and it's very unique because most programs do not come with books at all, but I know what it takes to be successful. So what I'm going to give you, if you get my program right now, it's $99 for 30 days access. You are going to get the Quick Facts book. This is a physical book that will be mailed to you. You are going to get a downloadable blue study workbook. You can download it. You can print it out. All right. You need both of these books to get the information to pass the exam. If you have Quick Facts by itself, you're missing a lot of the content. If you just have this book, you don't have delegation, prioritization, infection control. You don't have your, um, you don't have your psychiatric mental concepts. You don't have your orthopedics. It's not in this book. Right. So that is why when I say cover everything, you do that by both books. Right. You also get the lectures. You'll get a daily study calendar. You will get your question bank all from one program, all from one place. Do this program. And see the difference that it makes in your test results. If you do half of the program, then you may be one of the people that emails me and says, I did your review, but I didn't pass the NCLEX. So when people say that to me, I say, what do you mean you did the review? They say, I did quick facts and I watched YouTube videos. That's not the review. That's half the review. So then I have to tell them, go back and do the full program, okay? So start there, start there with the full program, and then we can have the discussion about everything else. 
Because if you do the program, then you should have more confidence, less test anxiety. Okay? More confidence, less test anxiety. And I'm doing these things like winning Wednesdays and Monday motivations to help you even solidify more. So you really have no excuses because you have the virtual program and then you also have me going live twice a week to do intensive study sessions with you. You have everything you need to be successful. So do your part by having all the tools when you sit down, okay? Professor, please, what other classes do you have? I wanna join those two. These are, these are the classes that I'm talking about here that I'm encouraging everybody to get into, the V2, okay? Um, so go to remarnurse.com, get in the V2, all right? This is the path, this is the path. Is V2 enough, alone enough to pass? Yes, V2 alone enough is to pass. All right, we have people that come on and say that. All right, yes, I am going to do that. I'm going to do that. I'm going to go so that I can give the nurses that I've traveled for. Num I'm, I'm taking this number one NCLEX instructor thing on the planet very serious. And I traveled the planet to get to Kenya and I wanna give these nurses in Eldoret my very best. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna sleep Ah, I'm going to go and I'm going to sleep so that I can give them my best because they're coming with an expectation for their the, the opportunity to change their life. OK, so they're coming with that expectation because they understand that if they do the work and, and this is people who honestly, they don't they don't have a lot. They're sacrificing. They're getting this program because they're like, hey, this is my flight. This is my flight ticket right here. And so they're getting this program. They're going to get this program. And in Africa, they are going to study online. And I, I, will, I will see them in the U.S. I know I will see them in the U.S. So God bless you all. I hope that the time that we have spent together will truly return good seed. I hope you see yourself as a worthy investment and as um a business owner, I hope you see yourself as a very um, lucrative, well-off person, because if you do what you need to do, you will become those things, right? And at the end of the day, you will be a blessing to many, many people. That's what my nursing license has allowed me to do. It has allowed me to bless many, many people. So I'm not going to be here forever. I need somebody else to take up the mantle and decide that they are going to invest greatly into other people. So good evening. Good morning, guys. Remember, you can, you will, and you must pass NCLEX. I love you all. God bless you. Bye-bye.